Okay, here we are. We now have two of the FFGX new frigates that the United States will start building next year. Uh, built and outfitted and ready to go. One of them, as you'll see, is FFG-80. The second, the one that I just finished, is FFG-81. Those are supposed to be the accurate pennant numbers for these ships. And as you can also see, they are very well apportioned and very good ships. These are uh, enhanced rebuilds of the Italian Frim class frigates. But at 7,600 tons for the U.S., they're really, even though they're being called frigates, they're really uh, a destroyer-sized vessel. And uh, I'll show you some of the enhancements. See the 57 millimeter gun on each of these ships. I have put 50 caliber machine guns at appropriate places around the uh, the deck and for protection. Uh, on this one, you can see a, a Seahawk helicopter having landed. Let's look at uh, the second one. The second one also has, as you'll notice, the ram missile launcher. And then I've got back behind the mass, uh, ram missile launcher on each of them, uh, either a 25 or 30 millimeter autocannon. Uh, that can also be, and probably ultimately will be, either uh, a rail gun or a laser, or maybe one of each. Uh, but they are planning uh, to put those on these ships uh, once they have them ready to go. And uh, the laser is pretty much ready to go, but they have extra uh, uh, electrical production capability on these ships. And as you can see, we've got life buoys and, and the like. On this ship, I don't have either of the side uh, openings uh, and access for the ship's boats. But on this one, I do, and I'll show it to you here in a minute when I go over to the other side of the ship. But on this ship over here, you'll notice I have uh, an Osprey. The United States Navy has picked uh, a version of the Osprey for its COD uh, aircraft, which is a carrier onboard delivery. And so uh, one of them could land on the deck of this uh, vessel or the cruisers or the destroyers and, and deliver supplies or personnel uh, from the carrier. I've also got, with its rotors folded up, a uh, another Seahawk helicopter. So let's go on around and, and look at both of these. You see the superstructure with its uh, SATCOM and various uh, radar uh, and other sensors, including the electronic uh, countermeasures here, uh, as well as three uh, PARs uh, for... Uh, an Aegis installation. It's got a 32 missile launcher on on board each uh, in front of the superstructure but behind the uh, middle gun, the main gun. But I did want to show you the the uh, let's go over here and look at this. Take a look at this guy. You can see the one of the ship's boats and the and the crane used to put it in the water. There, are the you can see the uh, naval strike missiles, sixteen of them, by the way. So this these ships have a very powerful and a very modern uh, surface strike capability, and that's important. And with the thirty-two uh, missile launcher up front the VLS, vertical launch, they can either uh, have uh, 32 times 4, which would be 96 evolved Sea Sparrow missiles, each one of which has a 50-mile range, uh, which would uh, add significantly to a carrier's uh, inner, you know, second layer uh, defense. Uh, or they can uh, put 16 in 
uh, standard missiles, or they can put eight long-range anti-surface missiles. Of course, with 16 of the naval strike missiles, they probably won't need those. Uh, but they could put them if they wanted an extra powerful punch and more range. The naval strike missile, uh, I believe, is close to 200, if not more, uh, nautical miles, while the uh, long-range anti-surface missile, which is brand new and is able to be launched from the MK-41 uh, vertical launch system, uh, has a range of about a thousand uh, nautical miles. So. Uh, that gives them uh, a longer range. And those can be uh, used, since they're using Aegis on these ships, and as you can see, there's a, another APARS there. Uh, they can do cooperative engagement. So the, some other aircraft, like an E-2D uh, uh, or an F-35C or B, uh, locates a ship or on some other ship, they can do cooperative engagement and launch from these ships. Also, they can add ASROC, which I expect they'll at least have four of those probably uh, for anti-submarine, and maybe not in the, in the role of uh, uh, escorting the um, <clears throat> carrier, uh, they might stick uh, mainly to anti-aircraft, but it just depends on, on how the, uh, uh, the commander of the task force wants it done. And as you can see, the this is a Navy uh, V-22 with its part, uh, you know, uh, aircraft number on there, and and then you've got an, a U.S. Navy uh, Seahawk helicopter over there, uh, like the other. It's also got its uh, life buoys uh, or life rafts here on the side, and life buoys spread around, uh, spread about on the on the uh, on the ship itself. And so now let's talk a little bit about this uh, idea of having it uh, a part of a carrier uh, strike group. I'm going to move these over. And as you can see back there, we have uh, uh, a 1 350th scale, which is the scale both of these ships are in. Uh, hi, Mom, if you can hand me that. Thank you. We'll put that up here slide the uh, carrier forward uh, and I have to thank my wife for helping. Uh, so this is the USS Ron Reagan and uh, over on that side we have a Ticonderoga cruiser which would be the leader of the uh, air defense and overall defense for the carrier. We have here a, a wonderful uh, model of uh, the USS Lassen, which is uh, DDG-82. And so the Lassen and all uh, Burke class 2A, Flight 2A vessels have 96 vertical launch missiles. And uh, you can see them there. And they will carry Tomahawk missiles. Uh, anti-surface Tomahawk missiles, either land or sea. They can carry the long-range anti-surface missile, which is also going to be uh, either uh, uh, ship or land, or can be, if they use the tactical uh, version of that missile. And, of course, uh, uh, Evolve Sea Sparrow missile, quad-packed, and particularly a goodly number of... Uh, air-to-air -air missiles, standard missiles, either long-range missiles that now, uh, particularly with the anti-ballistic missiles, have a couple of hundred mile range, uh, actually closer to 250. And uh, extended range uh, anti-air missiles with a 150 plus nautical mile range. So uh, the difference between that ship and the, uh, the ship over on the other side, which is uh, the USS Mobile Bay, uh, which is CG-73. Uh, it's not nuclear-powered either, like the Aegis class. Uh, the only nuclear-powered ships here are two. One is this front ship I haven't talked about. This is a uh, uh, Virginia-class vessel, and that's the USS Texas 
by the way, it's nuclear powered. And then, of course, you have the uh, Nimitz class uh, USS Ronald Reagan. And it's loaded with uh, F-35Cs uh, uh, launching here. You can see them. Also back here, we have a goodly number of F-15, F-A-18, uh, excuse me, F-A-18Es, uh, uh, which are set up for a strike. Uh, you can see uh, E-2D over there, and here's another uh, F-35C taking off. Uh, this ship has got uh, the sailors on it, as you can see as well. So this ship has been very well outfitted. I'm afraid that the uh, the lights for my uh, internal, yeah, for my uh, flight deck are, are out. So I've let those burn out. And I apologize for that, but it has a very, very good uh, build out on the entire uh, hangar deck of the vessel. And then back here in the back, we have another Arleigh Burke Flight 2A destroyer. So we've got 96, 96. Uh, of course, the uh, cruiser has 128 missiles. Uh, in vertical launch, plus another eight in uh, in the very back, as you can tell. And uh, those are harpoon missiles. Uh, but you can see it carries two. There's one of them there, but it can carry two uh, Seahawk helicopters as well. And uh, this particular carrier is one that I bought. It's the Nimitz carrier from... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, from uh, Trumpeter, I then uh, scratch built and also purchased uh, various pieces, like I say, either scratch built or purchased, uh, to turn it into the wrong Reagan. And uh, that's pretty neat to do. So I might... And now we have a carrier strike group that is the future of the U.S. Navy. Uh, I have, if you'll, if you'll look uh, out on my channel, you'll see that I also built uh, CVN-80, which is the USS Enterprise, and I loaded it up with sixth generation aircraft for a... Uh, 2030s layout. This is loaded up with uh, fifth generation F-32, F-35s, and uh, would be a 1924 or 2024 or 2025 uh, build of that carrier. But as you can see, we have the entire uh, battle group now with its very capable uh, frigates, and we're building uh, at least 20 of these frigates. And so there will be enough with 10 carriers to have two for each carrier. Uh, of course, you will have carriers that are uh, in maintenance and those that are working up out of maintenance. So you'll at any one time uh, only have seven or eight available <clears throat> unless there's a war on and they would then uh, try to keep eight or nine available at all times. Uh, but between those and the um, <clears throat> excuse me, the amphibious assault ships and their uh, groups, you would also want uh, some of these types of frigates available for them. Uh, although uh, you could use the upgraded littoral combat ships uh, to help out with those, uh, particularly if they were given uh, evolved Sea Sparrow missiles like, like these ships have. But these ships will have not only evolved Sea Sparrow capability, but also standard missile capability. So I wanted to, to show you how the new frigates would fit in uh, to the naval, the U.S. Navy <clears throat> strike group, carrier strike group, uh, you know, picture. 
of course, uh, in close sailing and for pictures and whatnot, uh, they might be uh, close like this. Probably not this close, but this is, as you can see, all the room I have on my uh, on my table. Uh, 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 but they would be fairly close like this uh, for pictures. At sea and at war, they would have a maximum of two ships uh, in close uh, and, and usually only one, either one of these frigates or the uh, Ticonderoga class cruiser uh, would be uh, close in uh, to the carrier. And then these other ships, uh, at least two, if not three of them, would be spread out along the, ma the major uh, threat axis uh, against the carrier so that they could hit targets well before they got in close to the carrier. And uh, the Ticonderoga cruiser here would be the guy that is... Uh, coordinating all of that. All five of these vessels would be able to do a cooperative engagement. <clears throat> and that's a very, very powerful capability that the United States Navy has. Uh, the Texas and all the Virginia class submarines are powerful weapons. The, the flight five of six uh, uh, submarines are going to have a hundred foot long extension and they'll probably build 20 of them and that hundred foot long extension is going to add uh, something like 20 or 24 I believe uh, uh, cruise missiles onto these ships so that they are a mixture between an SSN and an SSGN spread across 20 vessels instead of spread across four vessels as we are with the four Ohio class that we use now. Uh, four Ohio class, each one of them has well over 200 missiles and losing them, uh, any one of them is too much a loss uh, to take all at once. So we have to be very careful about how they're used. Very soon now we will start uh, having the later flights of the Virginia class that put 26 on each one. And uh, again, here is that Ticonderoga class cruiser. So I appreciate you taking a look. These are all 350th scale. The frigates, by the way, were, were bought from Dutch naval miniatures. Uh, they are 3D, but I added a lot to them uh, so you would have this look. But I would recommend uh, people going out and, and looking at uh, naval, uh, Dutch naval miniatures uh, ships. Thanks for looking. Hope you guys have a great day. Uh, but here's our new frigates uh, set up in the carrier as escorts. Thanks.